Good evening. My name is Mike Cuddy, here with the Clover Trading Team. Today we're gonna to talk about our three best and worst trades. Starting with one of my favorite tickers from this year, BETS. I liked it because it was a graveyard stock. This was a stock that was the cheapest, it has some type of memory with me because it was the cheapest stock I've ever seen on the NASDAQ. I've never seen a ticker that was listed on the NASDAQ that was sub one penny and bets got there. Now they got there through an immense amount of dilution, which is something that I like to base a lot of my trading style upon. So kind of knowing that dilution and knowing what the price range was, uh, I found a lot of opportunity, not only buying it in the gutter and taking it for about 100% move for a long bias pattern, but then when they did their reverse split in order to dilute more, I started to short sell it. Now this chart that I have in front of us today is reverse split adjusted. You can't really see exactly that it was sub one penny, but if I zoom out on the daily chart, you can see that this stock goes all the way up to about $85,000 per share. The stock didn't actually trade at $85,000 per share. It's because they've done a bunch of reverse splits. So in this case, you have to trust me that it was below 0.01. I've seen OTCs, I've seen pink sheets, I've seen gray sheets listed below one penny. I've never seen a NASDAQ listed stock. And it was trading hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of shares down there, turning volume. So I had some action, they did a reverse split and I started to short it because they still had a ton of dilution outstanding. It was an alternate cashless dilution so they pretty much were getting shares at the price of zero. And as the stock kind of went lower, they were getting more shares. So there was some toxic uh, features within the dilution. So that part I really liked. So yeah, I got short in the sevens and was able to ride down just dilution. It wasn't too much, but I made another six grand just, you know, holding the short for about two or three weeks. Was able to cover in the low threes or twos and then just kind of stopped trading it. And eventually as of March 5th, it delisted. So now I don't know where bets is. Bets is no longer a thing. It was something that was good to me for about a month or two at the beginning of this year, at the end of last year, and it was one of my favorite traders. So that was one of my top trades. The next trade that I like to talk about is Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae is a ticker that has treated all clovers fairly well. This is a ticker that we have treated all the way back going into 2010, I believe. And you can see Fannie Mae has had moments of volatility all throughout its history, in which we've had a lot of time to learn about the ticker, learn about its price action, learn about its behavior and its success ratios. So in the near term, when Fannie Mae sets up, in a way that is a breakout pattern. You can see on my chart, there is not one, but about two or three different opportunities to buy the breakout on the stock. No one specific breakout was better than the other, in my opinion, but they were all really good. Really good risk reward, really good continuation, really good profitability. For me personally, the breakout that I did best on, I'll just highlight it on my chart. I remember buying this initial breakout at 115 and making about $4,000. That was great. Nice. And then once we perked off this 130 base here, I started to buy in the 130s, risking the support level right below and pretty much took all the money that I made off the first breakout that I played and risked it on the second breakout because I was that convicted. So I had 4,000 shares of risk at a buck 33 average and pretty much took that position to $2 and made about 20 grand. So a really nice one to five risk reward ratio up about $24,000 on that ticker this year. And just happy to have been able to trade Fannie Mae. It's very rare that we get to do that. All of my trades on Fannie Mae have been long biased. And the last and final trade that was my best trade of the year, or I guess Fannie Mae, if you count all the trades together, is my best trade of the year. But this in front of us is a chart of SMCI. We'll get to the daily chart here on the bottom right. The part that I care about the most is this uptrend from um, pretty much end of January into mid-February. Started to go parabolic and tap that $1,000 price level for the first time in its history. Really big psychological level for this ticker. At 1,000, it's gonna be that psychological resistance that a lot of traders are eyeing for profit targets or for short selling areas. So big area of supply. I pretty much took the gamble on that day of, okay, we're extending. Ended. We haven't gone red in a number of days. Today's as good a day as any other day that this could have a red move. And since it is so extended, that red move might be very, very rangeful. It could be, you know, the past two days of price action all in one candle type of idea. I traded this a bit different. I was learning about options. I have been learning about options in the past, you know, six months. I haven't really placed a lot of options trades, but given that this was a thousand dollar ticker, I did figure that the options would pay better than shorting the comments. Most of the time I'm shorting small cap. If there is even options available, usually I'm not even trading the options, but again, for a thousand dollar ticker made more sense to me, especially the risk reward. I was able to buy the puts and they went up 500% intraday by the time I covered. Another situation where I risked about three grand and I made 17,000. And by the end of the day, the puts were up like 10,000%. So seriously, didn't 
maximize this trade, which was one of my regrets about the trade, but at the same time was really happy to have taken what I learned about buying puts and apply it to a day trading pattern that I have traded for eight or nine years. So really proud about that trade and the whole thought process that went into it. You know, it wasn't like I showed up to the market open that day and I was just like, oh, what if I did this? It was predetermined the night before that, you know, I wanted to buy puts. I expected to make 500 to a thousand percent on my money and I knew exactly how much I wanted to risk. I executed that plan. Everything worked out perfectly and I was just really, you know, pat on the back for me. So those are my three best trades of the year. Ever dreamed of trading like one of the Clovers? Well, it all starts with the right broker. Clover Trading and Centerpoint Securities have teamed up to supercharge your trading experience by joining Unlock the Power of CP Edge exclusively with Centerpoint. We're talking top tier trading tools worth over $6,000 all at your fingertips. Get ahead with real time scanners, cutting edge news, and a tailor made trading journal. Experience trading like never before with superior short inventory, personalized support, and interest on your idle funds. Plus, you can get competitive pricing that fits your trading style. Ready to elevate your trading game? Click the Clover trading link in the description below to get exclusive deals with Centerpoint Securities. Now let's get back to the content. First one on the list is LYT. LYT is a ticker I've actually had quite a lot of history with. It might actually be my biggest win back in the day in 2022 when I had this biggest win as a short seller, when I had this death drop, I had a couple of reverse splits, but it pretty much lost 90% of its gains in one day. And that was short for pretty much the whole move. But I had a bit of history with the ticker and I got to be a good thing or a bad thing in a lot of cases. In this case, it kind of ended up being a bad thing. So I suffered from a something called confirmation bias and it led to me compounding my loss. And what I mean by that is this stock started out as like a normal ticker. I like to short stocks that gap up a certain percentage every day and I like to fade them. And so this one, as you can tell, this is the day on March 7th, you know, it gapped up and it had some insane spike before fading. Basically, I was in my mind saying that this is a dog water ticker. It's a scam. They're going to liquidate this thing to zero. As you can see, the long term chart, like it's not necessarily wrong. It does go all the way back down and way basically where it came from. But it was volatile before that happened. And that's kind of, you know, catch 22 with stock trading, right? Timing is everything. So on this specific setup, I took a short near the market open. It started to squeeze. I got out of that short. I took a normal loss. That was fine. But since in my mind, this was such a dog water ticker and it was in my mind going back to where it came from, I gave it a second shot, kind of stepping out of my pattern performance and into straight gambling and took another loss. Now, I think on total, I was only down maybe 8,800 on this ticker. It's not necessarily you know a big loss relative to my wins. It's just undisciplined loss. So it burned a bit because that second trade was so unnecessary. So even though it's only $2,000 extra on the loss on that second attempt, it burned me more than most trades do. The next one is AVTX. This one's a bit more recent. You know, this is just my biggest loss of the year. It's honestly not something that I really made a mistake on. I'm not upset about this loss. This was another $8,800 loss. It rivals LYT. This was a situation where you can see it's another gapper, had a squeeze. And this was one that I was just a little bit oversized, a little bit too cocky coming into this into this day. And I don't really regret the size. Again, like my average losses are, you know, in between three and 6,000. So when I lose 8,800, it's not like I'm really doing anything that's undisciplined. It's just, it didn't work out. And this just happens to be my biggest loss of the year. So that's why I have included a chart of AVTX, but I would say it's a similar pattern to LYT. Just on AVTX, it, there wasn't a second shot. I just had more size uh, on the first shot and, and lost on it. Losses are part of the game, so they happen. I'm not upset about that one. Last but not least, INBS, for some reason, was a, was a stubborn ticker for me this year. I found myself trading it a lot for many different reasons. You can see on this chart that I'm showing you right here, a lot of gaps. Okay, so I've had a lot of gaps and runs. So I've had a lot of situations where, you know, I come to market open and it's and it's, it's a stock I'm targeting. For whatever reason, for all my patterns, it's always been choppy. I think whether it gaps up, you know, it holds its gains quite well. When it spikes into resistance, it blows right through it. It doesn't really adhere to resistance. So for a number of different patterns that I played on INBS, I lost. And again, I don't think the losses are anything greater than 8,000 in total, maybe 10 across a number of different trades, but it's just this ticker was stubborn. And so I didn't like it. I kind of blacklisted it after to this day. I mean, it hasn't really had many other days since February 12th. But after this day, I was just like, okay, I've traded this thing like three or four times now to no avail. And I hate this ticker. So that's also one of the, my, my biggest losses of the year. Like I said, my name is Mike Huddy from Clover Trading. And if any of these chart patterns interest you, if you want to learn how to trade chart patterns and volatility like this, check us out at Clover Trading in the link in the description below.